In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Capcom Home Arcade. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. So this unit was actually sent to me by Capcom for review, and I've been meaning to get this video up for a few weeks now. I've just been swamped with some other stuff and with my previous surgery. So I can finally get to this thing. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at the box, and it's actually a pretty clean looking box. They've kind of gone with a minimalist type of look where all they're really doing is just displaying the actual product right on there. There's not a whole lot of information, and even the information that is provided, it's just in the form of small logos and the packaging just looks really clean. In terms of what we see on the side, it's just additional profile shots. And then on the back, we're actually gonna have a little bit more information. So this is where it's going to identify for us what all the different types of games that we're gonna get on here. Now, as you guys probably already know, uh, this device is gonna feature 16 classic Capcom arcade titles from the CPS1 and CPS2 lines. So the games that we're gonna get on this are gonna be 1944, and for the first time, we're actually going to be getting a port of Alien vs. Predator. We've got Armored Warriors, we've got Capcom, Sports Club, Captain Commando, Cyberbots, Darkstalkers, Eco Fighters, Final Fight, Ghouls and Ghosts, Giga Wing, Mega Man The Power Battle, Pro Gear, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Strider, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. So out of the gate, we actually get quite a few different titles. And honestly, we've got some really good games on here. Uh, there's a few of my favorite games in terms of arcade games that are already on this. So I'm pretty excited about the game lineup. It is nice to see that they've really put in some good quality titles here. If we take a look at the side of the box, it's just gonna show us again, a little bit more information about the games. And then on the other side, it's gonna tell us what we actually get inside of the box, as well as any other technical specs and copyright information that they need to display. So let's go ahead and get this box open and see exactly what we get inside. So the first thing that we're gonna see in the box is obviously the fight stick, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Next, what we're gonna have in the top portion of the lid is a little power adapter. Now, the thing that I'm going to mention here is that it only comes with the UK style power adapter. It does not come with a US style power adapter. So you are going to need to find, if you are in the US or in North America, you're gonna to need to find an adapter that is a five volt, two amp power adapter. Now, that's pretty easy to find. If you've got a Raspberry Pi, probably you're good to go. Additionally, you can just pop it into a USB port on your computer and you should be fine as well. Next, we're gonna be given a really nice little handy user manual, and I actually had to use this, but I'll talk about that a little bit later on. We also got a couple stickers here, and these are just to help identify what is your select button and what is your start button on both first and second player controls. Then we're gonna have a really long micro USB power cord, and I really like when companies do this because it really gives you flexibility on where you can actually set this thing up. If you only have a six foot cord or a four foot cord, you're really bound by that length and you can't do a whole lot with it. You're stuck sitting beside an electrical outlet or your computer or whatever it happens to be that you're powering your device. So I do appreciate that they did this. And then of course we get an HDMI cable which is going to be of equal length. It's a nice long HDMI cable to really get you a good distance away from your TV. In terms of the design for this product, it's kind of hit or miss. I'm not really a huge fan of it. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't really like the idea of them just creating the shell to look like their Capcom logo. And I mean, it does look nice for what they were trying to do, but it also kind of feels a little bit lazy that they could have really taken any of the IPs or really customized a really cool multi kid looking device. And they just kind of went with like a basic Capcom logo. And again, like I said, for a Capcom logo, it looks good. The way that they've incorporated the buttons into the logo and the finish on it and everything else along those lines, it is and does feel like a very high quality product, but I do feel like the design was just a little bit lackluster and they could have done a lot more with it. That being said, the product dimensions are 29 inches wide, so it is a nice big device that two people can very comfortably sit side by side playing. It has a total height from the base all the way to the top of one of the joysticks of four and a half inches, and it is nine inches deep. In terms of its size, I think they were spot on, and I wouldn't have changed anything about its overall dimensions. 
Now I was expecting really high quality sticks and buttons because they did advertise they were using Sanwa parts, but I wasn't expecting the shell to feel as good as it does. It's almost got like a rubbery sort of texture along the outside. It feels really sturdy and it's got a great weight to it. When you put it down on a table, you don't have to worry about it sliding around under the weight of your arms because it does have such a good weight to it. Now I really think that this is going to be one of those items that a collector may put on a shelf or something like that just to kind of display what it is because it does have such a high quality finish. But again, I'm not a huge fan of the Capcom logo as the actual control deck, but I can live with it. It is what it is. Now in terms of the controls, they feel absolutely fantastic. After using the Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet and the Arcade 1UP Cabinets, and I've used a bunch of other fight sticks in the past, this is above and beyond the best controls and they have the best feel to them and you would expect nothing less from Sanwa parts. So if you are looking for something that is incredibly high quality, this might be the fight stick for you. Now let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and powered on. So I'm going to switch over to my capture card so you guys can see what I see on screen. So as you guys can see, the user interface is relatively clean as well. It doesn't have anything really flashing at you. You kind of have your game selection and you have a couple options in the top left and right corners. Now I do have to say what I was planning to do was play around with this at first um, before I did any sort of software updates or connect to Wi-Fi. And I gotta say that out of the box, the software is pretty glitchy. The control deck is hypersensitive. The buttons don't input right away. There's quite a bit of lag. And when you're playing games, it's really noticeable. So the first thing that I decided to do was go into the settings, connect to Wi-Fi and look for an update. And there was an update available. So I went ahead and downloaded that and it was actually really quick. It only took about a minute or so for the update to download and install. So I was pretty happy about that. And I should mention that after the update, the input lag went away. It was much less noticeable. In fact, in most cases, I didn't notice it at all. And one thing I do have a gripe with is that it took me about 15 minutes to figure out how do I access the settings from the main screen. You would think that you would just simply press up uh, on the joystick and left and right to be able to access your settings and your leaderboard information, but that's not the case. I ended up having to go and grab the user manual and read it. And apparently the only way to access your settings is to press up and right at the same time. So kind of go up on a diagonal towards it. If you try to go up and then right, it doesn't work. If you try to go right then up, it doesn't work. You have to go upright in that direction to access it. And it didn't really feel very intuitive. So that's something I'm not a huge fan of, but I can live with that now that I know how it's done. In terms of in-game display settings, you can actually have a few different options to choose from. You can choose from the original aspect ratio to a full screen or a wide screen. And additionally, they even have smoothing options for all three of those. So you can kind of pick what you think is best. Now, personally, I like the pixelated look and I always stick with the original aspect ratio for the best gameplay. So that's what I chose. Additionally, you have a few other setting controls. You can actually do a control check, which will allow you to make sure that all your buttons are being inputted correctly. And then we also have things like changing our native language settings. In terms of gameplay, I actually tested out every single game that was on here and everything played really, really well only after that firmware update. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually put a few of those games up on screen so you guys can check them out.
Now, one of the big things that I absolutely hated about the user interface is that as soon as you try to exit a game by pressing start and select, and you go back to the main menu, it makes you go through this really annoying placeholder screen that says Kosh Media, and then it takes you to the Capcom logo again, and then it takes you back to your main menu and it seems a little bit redundant. You end up having to sit there for about 10 seconds waiting in between exiting a game and getting back to your game selection menu. So I definitely didn't like that, and I hope that they fix that in an update because it's completely unnecessary. The other thing I wasn't super impressed with is that this device has been out for about three or four months now, and they've only had one firmware update. Out of the box, I did get the stock original OS, which was version 1.3, and when I did the update, we only got version 1.4, and there hasn't been anything since then. So I'm not really impressed with the support side of things on this either. There's definitely a lot of things that they could tweak in the UI to make things a little bit more enjoyable for the end user. But all in all, the build quality is really good, the games play really well, and I think that this is a pretty good device, but it does retail for about 230 US dollars, so it is on the higher end of things like this. Now to put that into comparison, you can often find Arcade 1UP cabinets, the whole cabinet, on sale for less than that. So it may or may not be worth it to you. I do have to say these controls are substantially better than any other cabinet that I've used or any other fight stick that I've used. And the other nice thing about this is that it can actually be used if you plug it into a PC as a standalone fight stick for any of your PC games. So that is a nice feature as well. But that's all I've got for you guys in this video. Please subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below what your impression of this Capcom Home Arcade Stick is. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.